I'm going to uh, discuss with you now the magic and the power of the cologne brush. When the cologne brush, also known as the rubber stamp tool in Photoshop, was first introduced many years ago, there was a lot of excitement on the power that it had, the power that it gave people. I'm going to zoom in right now into uh, this young bride's face and show you in the tool palette we have a clone brush, a rubber stamp tool. And if we were to option or alt sample, I just did the eye, I can go and make an eye right there. And I can option or alt the lips and I can go and repeat that. It's like a rubber stamp. You stamp what you want and you take the information and you put it wherever else you want to bring it. And it's a great tool for retouching. And that's the way it's used in Photoshop. In Painter, we have an entire brush category devoted to the cloners and it is used much differently. You don't only have the capability of cloning one part and going and fixing and retouching, but you can have an entire image cloned and have it entirely aligned as long as the clone source has the connection and I will show you. So let me undo all these things right now. By the way, you have up to 30 undos, just do command or control Z or you can do edit and undo or redo. So let me come in here <clears throat> and let me firstly take the image, the entire image, and by the way I could make the image smaller or larger just by zooming in and out. I'm just Zooming in and out of the image, the actual size of the image doesn't change. That has to do with the resolution. And if I hold down my space bar, I get this little hand and I can move it around wherever I want. And if I want to flip it sideways, I go under the hand and I have this little arrow and I can just go this way or that way. And you'll see sometimes it will be necessary if you want to paint in details and you want to get it just to where you need it and if you want to bring it back all you got to do is double click on it and you're back in business again I go to the hand and I can move the hand or I can just if I'm in the brush tool I use the space bar okay I went away from the topic just for a minute to show you a few more things and I'll tend to do that all the time I just keep on throwing information at you and that's a good thing okay so the first thing I want to do is I want to clone the entire image and show you one of the ways that I use it. Okay, there are many ways of using the cloners. This is one way. I have here the image and I want to paint it. But I don't want to paint on the original if I were to start painting on it and I made a mistake or I wasn't happy with the result. I would want to bring back information from a previous version so I need to clone it so I have a previous version. So I do file and I do clone. I'll discuss quick clone a little bit later. I just did file clone. So what I just did now is I did a duplicate. This is the exact duplicate of this image right here. Pixel for pixel and it's totally lined up when using the clone brushes. I don't have to go in and do an option or alt to reclaim my source. The source is already in here because I did file clone. And let me show you. The name of this image automatically is called clone of painting, right? If I go in here and do clone source, I look at my clone source, meaning where is it attached to? Where is the clone source? It is painting 01. Okay, so let me demonstrate the power of what, how I would use it. I'm going to come in here on this layer and I'm going to go away from the soft cloner right now. And let me just come in with a pastel and red. Let me zoom in and let me purposely just do some mistake. Okay, I am on one layer. I made a mistake. I want to undo it. What if I were to undo all my uh, command and control Z's and I can't go backwards anymore? I'm stuck. I can reach for my eraser and I can come in and erase, but it's erasing down to my background, which is by default white. So that's not good. Okay, but I have my clone tool and I want to bring back information which is under here and I could bring it back from a previous source but it has to be a clone source 
and that is from that image over there. So watch what happens when I use a clone brush. Take a look over here and you'll see where it's sampling from. I'm coming back into the cloners and I'm taking my soft cloner. There are many different types of clone brushes and they I will adjust them in a minute. I will show you how you can bring back clone color but in different brush strokes. The soft cloner is basically bringing back the same exact information in a soft way. So if I were to come in with the soft cloner on its default and I'm painting right over the cheek, notice how it is picking up from the previous image. You see the X mark and it looks to you just like I erased it. Okay, but I didn't erase. I took the information and I brought it back by painting it in with the clone tool. Let me take it one step further. Let me bring in an empty layer and let me go back to another, go back to the pastels and do the same thing. This time it's on an empty layer. I close the eye underneath, there it is. Okay. If I were to come in with the eraser because it's not an empty layer, let me get that eraser just a little larger. I just erased it and that's fine but again what if I wanted not to go back to the bottom source I want to bring back the information so I'm gonna go back to my cloner and that's right here my soft cloner and this time it looks like I'm doing the same thing it looks like I'm erasing and I'm bringing the information from the cheek on the previous image but take a look what happens this time if I close the canvas eye you see what it did? It didn't erase. It brought me that information and because I was on a separate layer, it brought it on the separate layer and it brought me back all that information. Now, when used correctly, this is a powerhouse. It's unbelievable the power that it gives you. Because just think for a second, if I were to paint, and I paint in sequential versions, I'm painting the eye, I'm doing different versions of it, and I worked like two hours and I saved four or five different versions and on version two I liked the way the eye looked but I didn't like it on version three I could go back as long as I reinstate that clone source and let me show you let me come in here and let me do some paintings I can't do um, too much that I didn't teach you yet so I'm just gonna paint in some trees and nothing's happening because I am still in my soft cloner not a good thing. Actually, what I was doing is just bringing back more of that information. So that's what happens. Let me go back to my pastel brush. And let's say I were to put in a little tree over here, which is exactly what I wouldn't do. I'm changing the little colors. And I like the way that looks. And let me go File, Save As. And I'm going to take away the word Clone. I'm going to save it onto my desktop. And I'm going to call it 01. And I'm going to make sure, since I'm doing the saving, let me show you that I save it always as a Photoshop file and always uncompressed so I don't have any problems um, with corrupted files later. And I'm saying save. I'm saying OK. I continue painting. And now I'm going to paint a red flower. I'm going to put some orange leaves there and some blue. Really a beautiful art piece. And now I'm going to call it File, Save As. I'm going to call it O2. And save it to my desktop, uncompressed, and say Save. So now I have many versions happening. I have the original, I have one, and I have O2. Let me go into this version, go back into the green, and fix that green a little bit. Let's say I wasn't happy with it, and I went a little too far. I added a few more flowers. And I'm going to come in here and say File Save As and let it be version 3. I'm exaggerating, obviously, because I want to prove a point. So now what I have is, let me open up all the files that I have. File Open, we go to my desktop, and let me show that I have 1, and I have 2, and 3. And let me open them all up. Okay, so O1 has just, let me zoom in. O1 has just this flower over there. O2 already has two flowers. 
And 03, I went too far. In 03, I wanted to fix that green flower, but I don't like it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to erase. I want to go back from version 1. Do I erase it? Let's see what happens if I erase it. If I erase it, it's in a separate layer, it's going to take everything away. I don't want everything away. I want, it should look exactly like in 01. Because that's the way I got it just right. I went a little too far. So what I want to do is I want to clone from version 01 into 03 and bring in the information exactly like that without erasing it. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm in 03. I'm going to go File, Clone Source. And I have to say, where do I want my cloner to bring the information from? Which source do I want to use? I want to use a one, because that's where I like the way it looks. And I'm going to say, okay. Now I'm going to go and get my clone brush. And I'm going to come in here and just go right over it. And it looks like it's totally erasing the other version. But basically, it's rubber stamping. It is sampling. It is cloning from version 1. So just imagine, and you will understand this much more as we proceed to paint, I will show you the different powers of cloning, where you can clone from different versions. Now two things very important. Number one, both clone and the source have to be exactly the same size pixel for pixel, or else you'll be cloning from the eye and you'll be putting it on her head. It has to be lined up. So they have to be exactly the same size, and your clone source has to be open and you have to have it selected so let's say I would come in here and change my clone source to current pattern and many times you will find when you use your cloner you'll wind up getting this image of those flowers and Corel Painter leaves it there on purpose so that you know that you're using the wrong clone source when you see this happening don't go, oh no, just know that you have to go and change your clone source. Okay? So that's it for cloners at this point. I will go and speak about the cloners and how to paint with them a little bit later on in different chapters, as we, um, mostly when we're going to do the photo painting palettes.